Don't you just love tools? They're useful for all sorts of things. So what I do is I keep a couple of toolboxes. I've got one here. And in here you'll find all sorts of useful tools. This one you can use for digging the garden. This one can use, use this one for shaving pieces of wood. This one's pretty good for drilling. No product placement intended. Nice saw there, useful to cut pieces of wood. Nice pair of grips, all very useful. And it's exactly the same if you want to be a teacher. You need a set of tools in your toolbox. A set of skills that you can draw on. So when I turn up for a job, I've got my toolbox here. Any tool I want for the job, I'll just take out the appropriate tool. If I want to grip a bolt, I'll get these out. If I want to chop something, I'll get my chopper out. You use the appropriate tool for the job. And it's the same with teaching. When you want to learn to be a teacher, really what it's about is it's acquiring a set of skills. So for example, you might learn to give formal lectures where you prepare a lecture, you give a lecture, you evaluate the lecture, and you're lecturing in a fairly formal, traditional situation. Or alternatively, you might be aiming for a more interactive style of teaching, where you use what's called talk and chalk. I know we don't use chalk very often now, it's often felt boards and pens, but the essence is the same. You're talking, you're describing things, and you're drawing and doodling things and writing notes down and drawing diagrams as you go along. So a talk and chalk method. Or you might learn to use question and answer. Now what do you think we mean by question and answer? So you're developing questions to which the student gives an answer. Because the aim is to facilitate an interaction between the mind of the student and the material, and indeed your mind. I don't agree with this statement, but it's often said a lecture is the process whereby the information goes from the notes of the lecturer onto the notes of the student without going through the minds of either. I don't really think that's true, but the question and answer is the exact opposite of that. It's another tool you may use. So you're in class, someone shows a degree of confusion, and you can ask questions. Maybe their underpinning knowledge is lacking and you have to support that knowledge with underpinning theoretical constructs. But you can do that by asking the questions to facilitate a realisation, rather than the more traditional lecture and talk and chalk, which is more didactic, more just giving information. It's not that one's right, it's not that one's wrong, there's a place for both. Or you might want to develop skills in computer-aided learning, so-called CAL also very useful. I guess that's what we're doing now. This is computer-aided learning if you're watching this video on a computer system. Or you might want to learn to be a facilitator so that you can facilitate discussions, facilitate small group works, facilitate perhaps role play where people pretend that they, not pretend, simulate really that they're in a particular situation. How would they feel in that situation? Often very good for what's called affective learning as opposed to cognitive learning. So cognitive learning would be where we just discuss facts. Affective learning is more about the phenomenological experience. How does it feel to the individual to be in that particular situation? Going on from that, depending on your particular discipline, you might want to develop role play and simulation, develop the role play into simulation. So you might want to simulate, for example, a particular patient with a particular condition. What clinical features would be observed? How would we recognise this? So these are all diff different tools that you can use. So this one might be a lecture. This one might be talk and chalk. This one might be facilitated learning. This one might be role play and simulation. Don't worry, I've got plenty of other tools in here. I've got spanners and all sorts of things, different pairs of pliers. Can you see it's exactly the same with your teaching repertoire? So you need to work out what techniques are good for you, develop those techniques, but then of course work out which techniques you're not so good at, 
because you want to develop those as well to work on your weaknesses. Now I'm often asked the question are teachers born or are they made? And as with everything of course the answer is going to be a bit of both. If you are born with the ability to teach, the embryonic ability to teach, and you work on that then you can become a great teacher, facilitating knowledge, empowering those around about you.